In this video, we're gonna talk about chronic leukemia. Recall, chronic leukemias are more indolent, they're less aggressive because they have less blast. And so by definition, they have more mature cells, uh, more functioning cells. So I'll just say more mature cells. And it's not uncommon to see in chronic leukemia that these mature cells are actually the cause of the leukemia. So we'll start with a recap of the basics. Recall you have your hematopoietic stem cell that goes on to make your myeloblast and your myeloid lineage. And then you have your lymphoblast or your lymphoid lineage, recall? And so if we have chronic leukemia of the myeloid lineage, we call that chronic myeloid leukemia, makes sense. And if we have chronic leukemia of the lymphoid lineage, we have chronic lymphoid leukemia. We'll just start with the basics of chronic CLL first. CLL is actually the most common leukemia. So I'll write down most common, seen in older patients, older, so around 60 and above, etc. And the mutated cells you see are gonna be these mature B cells, and they're incredibly mutated, so much so that they have CD5 markers. CD5 is not a marker we associate with B cells. Recall, when we talked about B cells, we talked about like 10 and above, so 10, 19, 20, etc. And, and, then, and then when we talked about T cells, we talked about CD2 through eight. Well, this B cell is so, I guess, mutated that it has a CD5 marker. Very important. These mutated cells are also somewhat fragile, and if you make a blood smear, they'll, they'll basically break apart. And you'll see these things called smudge cells. Picture will be in my notes. Very characteristic of CLL. And again, these, these B cells, because they're so mutated, they can't really make or make functional immunoglobulins. So we're going to say low functional immunoglobulins. And in fact, one of the most common causes of death in CLL is just infection. Yeah, because your immune system's so, so shot. What it can make, unfortunately for us, is antibodies, autoimmune antibodies, that cause hemolytic anemias. Hemolytic anemias. <laughs> that's, that's a double whammy. It can't make functional ones, but it can sure make destructive ones. So it's strongly associated with hemolytic autoimmune anemias. And one thing you should know is that CL can undergo a transformation and actually become a lymphoma. The exact type is gonna be diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. That's quite a mouthful, we just call it D-L-B-C-L. Just to abbreviate it for him. Shouldn't surprise you that it's diffuse large B-cell lymphoma because it, again, it's made from B-cells. So just remember, as long as you remember it's a mutated B-cell, then a lot of these things kind of fall into place. Something you should know, there's a very similar disorder called SLL, or small lymphocytic lymphoma. Um, recall, leukemias are more prominent in your bone marrow and blood, that's why we call it leuke leukemia. And then lymphomas are more prominent in your lymph nodes, that's why we call them lymphomas. And so these are basically the same disorder, but if it's more prominent in the blood, we call it CLL. If it's more prominent in, in lymph nodes, we call it SLL. But for your intents and purposes, they're just interchangeable. Yeah, that's a little bit uh, somatics, but I just wanted to go over it with you so to, to avoid any confusion. So that's CLL. Let's move on to our myeloid lineage. Now CML is gonna be a neoplasm of proliferation of mature myeloid cells. So um, these include cells like basophils and eosinophils which we haven't really talked about much, so makes it somewhat unique. And recall, I said that some leukemias arrive spontaneously, but some leukemias are associated with genetic abnormalities, chromosomal abnormalities. And CML is a big one. About 90% of people that have CML have this particular genetic abnormality. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's gonna be the translocation of chromosome nine and 22, also known as the Philadelphia chromosome. We discussed this back when we were talking about B all. We talked about how this gives a, a worse prognosis if the patient has this. This is because a gene called the BCR gene on chromosome 22 and another gene called the ADL gene 
on chromosome 9. When you have a translocation of these two chromosomes, they fuse together and they make something called a fusion protein. Fusion protein. This protein is a tyrosine kinase signaling protein. A tyrosine kinase signaling protein. So it signals tyrosine kinase, which we said helps in cell uh, induction and proliferation. And this is always on and never switches off. So that means you always have cells proliferating. And that's why it can cause cancer. How do we treat it? Well, well, when we make drugs, we try and treat the underlying cause of whatever we're talking about. And the underlying cause is this tyrosine kinase signaling protein that's going haywire. And so we treat it with tyrosine seen kinase inhibitors. Makes perfect sense. The drug name is called amantinib or Gleevec. That's the, and that's a brand name. Does really well in treating this and the survival rate and the prognosis is pretty good. If you leave this untreated for whatever reason, recall um, chronic leukemias have less blast and more mature cells. Well, in this case, if you leave it untreated, you're gonna have increased blast eventually. And once it gets over 20% blast, then it's basically a acute leukemia. So it progresses from this kind of chronic indolent state to this uh, rapid acute state. So moral of the story, don't leave it untreated. Yeah. Now I wanna take some time and talk about an important topic. And that is the topic of leukemoid reaction. We talked about, when we talked about left shift, if you have an infection, you'll create more immature um, white blood cells to try and combat that infection it'll leak out in your blood. Yeah? So if you have all these immature white blood cells leaking out in your blood, we can call that a leukemoid reaction. How do you tell that apart from a CML, which also has immature white blood cells? How do you tell those two apart? Well, for starters, in the leukemoid reaction, I'll just write LR for leukemoid reaction. In leukemoid reactions, again, it's from infection, and the predominant cell in infections are commonly neutrophils. However, in CML, you'll have neutrophils, but you'll also have increased basophils and eosinophils. That's a big one. Another thing, in leukemoid reactions, you're gonna have an increase in LAP. What the heck is LAP? LAP is leukocyte, aka white blood cell, alkaline phosphatase. It is an enzyme found in neutrophils. So if you have more neutrophils, you're gonna have increased LAP. That just makes sense. In CML, you're gonna have a decreased LAP. Because in CML, you're going to have more neutrophils, yeah? But these are mutated neutrophils. They don't have LAP anymore. So you're going to have a decrease in LAP. That is a big finding you should know. And then finally, the catch-all is CML has Philadelphia chromosome. Yeah, that's just its defining feature. So I'm not even going to bother writing that down. Just know this helps you kind of differentiate the two. That is your CML. That is your CL. Those are your most common leukemias. Now I want to take some time to talk about a little bit less common leukemias, these little funky ones that, that kind of straddle the line between leukemias and lymphomas. I'll start my talk with hairy cell leukemia. Hairy cell leukemia is again going to be um, a cancer of your B cells. And they call it hairy cell because you have these little cytoplasmic projections that makes it look hairy. And the key defining feature is that these cells stain TRAP positive. TRAP stands for tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. It's largely been replaced by uh, cell flow cytom cytometry, but this is more like a historical thing, you know? So it's TRAP positive. And how we treat this is with perine analogs. So they look like perines, they go into DNA and they kind of break DNA, and by breaking DNA, uh, these cancer cells can't proliferate. These perine analogs include cladribine, chemical name is 2-CDA, or pentostatin. These are your perine analogs, and they're great treatments for hairy cell leukemia. 
Another one I want to talk about is adult T cell leukemia, or sometimes called adult T cell lymphoma. It's called that because they're from mature T cells. And these mature T cells can become cancerous if you're infected by a virus, H T L V 1. That stands for human T lymphotropic virus. Lymphotropic means it likes T cells. So T lymphotropic. This virus loves T cells and because it loves T cells so much it can rev it up and cause adult T cell leukemia and lymphoma. Very important you know any virus or any bug that causes cancer. Yeah, very important you know those. Those are, those are common test questions. You're going to have signs of leukemia. You're also going to have signs of ly lytic bone lesions. That is adult T cell leukemia. And the last one I want to talk about is called mycosis fungoides. Mycosis fungoides. Mycosis fungoides goes by a more scientific name, cutaneous T cell lymphoma. So we're going to be talking about T cells again. And this time, you're going to have mature T cells that invade into your skin. That's where the cutaneous portion of the name comes from. And when it invades into your skin, you have these lesions all over your body. Uh, picture will be in my notes. So check that out. So I'll just write skin lesions. And if you do a biopsy or if you look at it under a microscope, you're going to see all these micro abscesses. And all these cells that have a funky mutated nuclei. It looks kind of like, uh, they say it's brain-like. I don't know if I see that resemblance, but that's what they call it. It's, they call it brain-like. Again, a picture will be in my notes. And those are your chronic leukemias, even the funky ones. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, thanks.